Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to What the Duck. This is episode number 18. Only four of us on today's panel. We've got Sunsan and Mott still over at uh, the BTS house for Star Ladder. I'm Zayori, joined today by Sir Action Slacks, Mott Packs, and Purge. Guys, before we get too excited, though, I want to point out this sick, swaggy shirt we've got going on here. The Hippo. The Hippo lives on apparel. This is our first bout of Moonduck merch. I'm very excited about it. When do we get one, dude? Come on. Yeah, TI, baby. I got 65 of them in a box in the other room. You know, 65 shirts weighs a lot more than I thought it would. In my head, I was like, that's ah, no problem. Just throw in my suitcase. It's a lot of shirts. Yeah, I, I, mean, I encountered that problem as well. I actually, um, I, I got some t-shirts back from Team Liquid because they closed their, their store for me because I wasn't selling enough shirts, right? So I'm like, all right, I need to sell some shirts. So I bought, I, I went to Uline, which is this, like website you buy boxes from, and I bought boxes. They're the fucking tiniest boxes ever. I can't even fit two t-shirts in one box. <laughs> I fucked up. Yeah, oh, that's depressing. Shirts are big, basically, is my point. Yes, bigger than you would think. If you want one of these shirts, you can get it on Teespring. It's still live right now, teespring.com slash moonduckti6. We uh, strategized it so it would be available, hopefully, by TI. They arrive, like, right as people would be leaving for TI. So if you want to rep your Moonduck garb, you'll be headed up to Seattle, especially for the main event. You might want to pick it up, but that's enough sellout action for now. How are we doing, boys? Trent, welcome back to the podcast. How are you, sir? I'm doing good. You sound amazing. Back in Canada. I know. Well, I have this great new setup. It's uh, <laughs> far superior to what I had before. So that's great. What were you using before for audio? Uh, it was just a, a Blue Yeti, the classic, you know. Okay. The huge... Everybody's starter caster microphone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I skipped the Yeti, actually. I started on the Snowball and then went straight for the audio mixer. What's it? Oh, wasn't the go. Yeti similar to the Snowball? Yeah, I think it's slightly it's above. better. Yeah. yeah, it's more expensive. I think it, it, I don't know. The problem with the Yeti and the Snowball is it captures so much ambient noise. You know, you have any, anyone else in your room or a pet or anything, and it picks up all that garbage. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty bad for that. And it's bad for, like, I have a really squeaky chair, too, so it was pretty bad. I had to, like, sit perfectly still the entire time I cast. All right, Slacks, what are you thinking over there? You're making that face. No, I'm not making a face. He's making no. the, I, I'm so tired, I don't want to be here face. No, I'm making the invested face. Moonduck! <laughs> Slax is actually really disappointed because he doesn't wear t-shirts and we only got t-shirts. So I don't yeah, know how you're going to fix this whole Moonduck true. thing. That's actually true. I'm not a big t-shirt guy. I'm a polo dude. A little bit of class, a little bit of collar. I mean, it's just good. It's the I mean, same thing. I, I don't wear shorts either. Fuck shorts. Like I've ever? seen you wear a t-shirt though. You've got that I hate Monday shirt with that real sassy yeah, cat. Yeah, the cat! I left that at Sunspan's house. That was a different... I wear tall tees. <laughs> If they're really uh, long, I'll nice. wear them. But like fuck. a moo moo. Now, I will yeah. say, I ordered yeah. some female cut versions, and apparently, a custom ink, wherever I got the shirts from, their women's sizes are like men's sizes just with the little sleeves. Because usually, women, like an a XL women's size, is like a men's medium or a men's large or something. I got a, a 2XL women's shirt, and it is massive. It's like two really? of me. I mean, it's huge. <laughs> it would probably cool. be big on you, Slacks. Oh, so damn. Our, our women's shirt selection <laughs> leaves some. Damn. Wow. Uh, especially All right. if you're. Good luck, ladies. A petite young lady. So, All uh, the single ladies, get ready. Yeah. 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 Find a buddy so you can share your shirt. Yeah. We got oh, free man. blankets on the website. <laughs> <laughs> Moonduck blankets. There you go. Yeah. All right. So, plenty to talk about today. Um, guys, we're, we're going to talk some anecdotal stuff. I was at Summit 5. Trent, you were just in Lithuania for a little bit of esports action. So, we've got stuff to talk about there. The betting cease and desist action, Dota 2 Lounge, going to go bye bye soon. We can talk about that. I'm sure everyone's super opinionated. And uh, uh... we're going to talk about uh, OG as well as Mineski a little bit, some roster changes, sponsor changes, all that stuff. So. Where do we want to start? I vote you, Trent. I want to hear about this Lithuania adventure. What were you? I didn't even realize that you were going to an esports event. You're yeah. like, no, I'm going to be gone. I'll be busy. I thought you were going <laughs> on holiday or something. But no, it was uh, it was some it was a game show thing. It, so there was this like it was like a scholarship, like a university tournament in China, and basically um, Gareth, you guys know, you know, formerly known as Dirk, the Durka. artist formerly known as Dirk, Dirk Dota. Yeah. So Forever he had Durka. this thing going on. He was like, hey, you want to go to Lithuania? And I was like, do I want to go to Lithuania? Yeah, so I had some awful flights. Actually, they weren't too bad. It was just really long because it's like a lot of hours for travel. It would have been like yeah, hours total or something just with like layovers and everything. So it was like Chinese universities. There was one Russian squad with like a 7K player stack, and I thought they were going to take it. And there was an Australian team there too. Uh, but it was all going down in China, and we were doing the coverage from like the studios in Lithuania and Vilnius for a game show. Because probably. Huh. Yeah. 
So, it was on a Zubu, so I'm really surprised you guys didn't hear about it. But so, as a Canadian, um, you flew yeah. to Eastern Europe to cast a tournament that was taking place still in China. remotely. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Well, originally, apparently, the plan was that we were supposed to go to China, like the original coverage, and that's why okay. they ended up getting like land casters in the first place. But then that you know China happened, so they didn't get it worked out for them to be in China. So that I just got to go to Lithuania, but it was cool. actually like great, man. I like went around. I had like six hours casting the first days of like two best of threes and then we did one best of three on the last day and then i was there for about four days not counting like travel was there like a live audience Vilnius. and stuff too was it like a legit land with a yeah, yeah. Crowd? it was like a legit land yeah wow we got the live feed and everything you know flat Boys, champ, missed out. everyone that could have been a moon duck production right there except on? the players weren't there right <laughs> what at the land yeah oh not not with us no there weren't like there was no like people with us but like, like there's the, no the people. actual land in China. Oh, okay. The land, the land was in China. So you guys were like yeah. remote feeding with an audience. Yeah. Ex like, oh, no, no. We had no audience. Oh, okay. So God, you were no. just in a studio. We were right. just quite literally in a so studio. It was sort of like cast. what we did okay. for the captain's draft playoffs where they flew you guys all to a central location. Then you still did remote coverage. It's kind of that. Yeah, exactly. That all kind right. of deal. Okay. Well, that's cool. Wow. Yeah. Slacks, what have you well, been doing? You didn't go well, to the summit. You not died. sleeping. No. What have you been working on, man? You've been quiet. Yeah, no, I uh, I've been taking it real quiet. I haven't really been bathing or shaving or anything, getting ready for <laughs> TI. Uh, you know, no deodorant. As a spectator. Is I that how you prepare? Get real you just fucking stinky. Well, every primal. year they make that threat. They're like, please shower, guys. Please shower. And I make a point to be as fucking filth as possible. Every time I see that shit, just like fans come over and you give them the hug right in the armpit and you're like, yeah, eat that shit up. Nah, man, I've been quiet. I've been, I've been resting. I, uh, I don't know, man. Just, just living my life. I, I went ham for a while. Now I'm just real, real quiet. The quiet was, before the storm. It was four days of Mr. Cat. Like, <laughs> that, like that sucked, but it was I know. four days. I've just been being a bitch, dude. My girlfriend's <laughs> just like, hey, she's real excited. I'm back. She won't stop talking to me. I don't know what the deal is. My pug keeps <laughs> talk, hanging out and talking to me. It's just weird, wow. man. You got to really... not into it. That's a hard life, life right there. Yeah. I really got to shave. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't shaved in weeks. But this is all that happens. I got nothing here. It's pedo mustache and then all neck beard. Well, nothing else grows. I don't it, know what the deal is. It almost looks good from the front, but it's kind of like mine, actually. I, I mostly grow under the chin. It's, yeah. It's bad, what man. Is, look how thick that shit is. The neck beard is all I have. It's like when you, when you look straight on, it almost looks like you groomed it perfectly. You know, yeah. so you just have the looks bottom okay, part. Straight on. Like you kind of shaved it out. If yeah, you shaved off all this. the neck beard yeah. and it somehow got a little thicker, it'd, it'd actually be okay. The mustache, mustache is a little guy. thin, though. I'm not a mustache guy. It's a very pedophile Why? mustache, I think. Yeah. Uh, I, was, I was thinking more like Italian, but I don't know if that's accurate. Oh, anyways. you're the salami! No, but uh, <laughs> that's all I got. <laughs> Jesus. I got some other bad like shit going on. Uh-oh. Um, Personal training, real bad. Oh, yeah. So last year for TI, right, I, was, I went into this place, and I was like, yo, I want to get some personal training. I want to look good. And, you know, I saved up some money. And I was like, I'm working out. I am I don't think my body releases endorphins when I go to work out. I'm fucking miserable on the way there. I'm miserable working out. And I'm miserable for days after. It's just all misery. Okay. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to torture myself. I go into this gym and I'm like, yo, I want personal training, dude. Five days a week for a month. I just want to go crazy. And he's like, all right, sign this lease, right? And then he's like, yo, cool. Come back a week later. And he's like, yeah enjoy your year and i'm like a year i wanted a month and he's like nah dude i got you on that contract for a year you should have read it there's no way out <laughs> so i fucking paid for a year of personal training it cost me everything i got fucked i tried to go to court and everything didn't work out anyway they fire that guy i found out a week later i go in there and they're like hey we're gonna give you all your personal training back so i'm like nah, nah, I don't know. they're like yeah no use it so now I'm fucking personal training. I have like 200 days of personal training. I want to kill myself. I just did it for the first time yesterday. I want to kill myself. Wow. It's horrible, dude. I like it's always the worst. Fat. Do they, the they like day. yell at you? Yeah. It, I got some new military chick. She's like ex-military fucking army doctor. She's like, you look like you're going to pass out. You need to work harder. <laughs> When's the last time you ate? And I was like, last night. And she's like, get out of my gym. <laughs> 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 
I don't like. I don't give a shit what I look at. Like that's Dude. one thing. A lot of people care. Yeah. I like being fat. I like eating things. I like sleeping a lot. I don't give a fuck. I've already won. The game's All already right. over. I was just gonna say, imagine how good you're gonna look for TI, but I guess that's not really gonna matter so much. Okay. With all that said, Slex, we want you to live longer. Yeah, I don't. You're literally I don't. the only thing keeping you alive. <laughs> so. All I want to do is eat pizza every day and die young. You can eat pizza every day, <laughs> but not go over your calorie surplus. No, dude, that's not life, dude. Go you easy on the carbs, life. dude. Do you want to fucking work out every day and care, or do you just want to eat pizza till you have cardiac arrest? You I only know. get to live once, dude. What about this, Lex? What Middle about you ground? eat too much pizza every day, but you also work out, and therefore you offset the calorie gain? And Michael Phelps you, style, dude. You'll he eats a lot of pizza. You'll just lose weight that way. Whatever. It's literally yeah, mad. like Ene McDonald's, like at the Olympics? I mean, how hard can it yeah, be? Yeah, dude. I mean, he eats like 8,000 calories a day or some shit. Yeah. It's absurd. Of course, you gotta work out or something in order to balance that out, I guess. But Man, Yeah, right? he's also sucks. a giant. Uh, wow, Slacks. I'm sorry to hear that, buddy. I didn't realize there was so much turmoil going on when we were making light of Dota this morning in GGM. I would have been much more no, serious okay, and man. candor knowing that you were suffering so much. It's good. I am going bald, so I can't stay fat forever. If I <laughs> shave my head, I'll just look like some kind of big rapist baby. Some giant so, baby. If, you, if you're bald, you have to either be buff or like hyper skinny you can't be the bald fat guy it's just not good it's, yeah, it's really a, not good a stereotype you dare not venture down like That's, a eunuch yeah, Unic, <laughs> like yeah eunuch, you don't yeah. want to be fucking barons <laughs> <laughs> walking around the dota thing hello autizzi <laughs> like oh jesus anyway oh that's a one-way ticket to get invited to the summit six i think buddy you can make Hell it oh yeah dude <laughs> All right, that's my life now. Dude, they anyway. were sad to, to miss you at the Summit 5. Everybody was saying, man, it doesn't feel like a Summit without Slacks here. We were making all that funny content, the Pokemon video, and a couple other videos that they felt like, you know, that we oh, didn't have that Slacks, Slacks creative juice. They hired me to be a fucking driver the first year, okay? They weren't missing me that much. That hey, I'll year, be right? honest. That was my doing, okay? <laughs> hey, know. guys, wouldn't it be funny if we hired Slacks to be a driver but didn't put him on camera? Actually, that would be pretty funny. Let's do it. No, no, no. I, I miss the summit too, but it's just girlfriend shit, you know? What yeah. am I supposed to do? I mean, you do? saw your boys' wings won it, right? Wings! Yeah. Wings. They're actually not my boys. I love them so much. Every time I try to talk to them, they blow me off. It really hurts me. <laughs> I mean, they also don't speak English, dude. <laughs> I know, I know, but I'm just like, I go up and I'm like, hey! They're probably <laughs> afraid of you. They're just like, who is this giant Why yelling at us in a foreign language? Signs at us. Like, what they is this gesture? Means. Like, They're like, you... I'm Hey guys! Yeah, I guess you're right. That's kind of scary. Okay. <laughs> yeah. We should have asked Jack what they thought, what they think of Slacks. Just like, what do they think of that big tall guy that says "wings" every time their name comes up? I wonder oh. if they're privy to the whole joke. I don't think so, man. Yeah, probably not. They're still no rocking those sick shirts, though. Those shirts are sick. <laughs> they're right. Those things are gonna be gaming hot shirts. merch at TI. I'm just gonna make like 15 of them and fucking sell them for a hundred dollars each. You know that shit will sell. Wings. Yeah, it definitely would. Yeah, would Team Wings are like the fucking Kanye of Dota 2, dude. They just yeah. roll up. It's sick. Anyway, we should talk some Dota 2, huh? What do we dude, got well, here? Well, I mean, Summit, right? I, I, Wings, I, we've seen this team play that style. Like Now they're known as the unpredictable team. You know, they, they play what they want, when they want, how they want, sort of. Um, I, I heard somebody at the Summit say, I think Shadow is the best carry in the world right now. And it, there's always that talking when a team is winning. It's easy to sort of talk about how good the players are, but... Shadow had a couple games at event that were absolutely incredible. I don't know if did, did anyone else watch the summit? Trent, did you get to see any of it, or were you overseas? I was. For all I was of it? in. Yeah, I was away yeah. for. A, I rewatched. I went back and watched a couple of the series, and I watched the grand final. But he had yeah, no. I agree with that. He looked really good. He had one Morphling game in particular that it was like he was at a thousand HP the entire game. Every time he took damage, he would like min max the morph just enough so that he would stay at that threshold to maximize his damage. He had a, a nearly flawless anti mage game where he just. It was like a work of art, watching him move around the map, maximizing farming kills at the same time. They're just on another level of coordination and communication, man. I, I'm excited to see what Wings does at, uh, at the big event at TI. People were saying the same thing at Manila, actually, privately. They all, everybody was basically saying that Shadow was the best carry in the world at that moment. And they ended yeah. up flopping really hard at Manila. But it's good to see that they recovered. It's just kind of bizarre, like, how they changed so much. I mean, I guess they didn't yeah. play that many sets at Manila. It was only... If you go out first round, you only play, like, what, four series or something like that. But... Uh, it's really weird to see them go get last place at TI and then now be or at Manila and be good again. Yeah, I, I really like uh, their their attitude as well. The, the translator told me that in the car ride over, they were joking about how awesome it would be to beat Navi with Pudge because it's Dendi's signature hero. 
And just the fact that they even contemplated picking it just for the reason of, wouldn't it be badass if we beat Na'Vi with their signature hero? <laughs> like, that's, that's the kind of energy I want channeled into the main event of TI, you know? <laughs> yeah. Just, just Vendetta's straight <laughs> it ain't about the Dota. It's like, man, let's oh, fucking that's, beat OG uh, with Phoenix and Elder Titan. Fuck those guys. Yeah, that Spearbreaker <laughs> Age of Steel. I saw that game. Oh, oh my yeah. God. What was that? Yeah, dude, they just that picked That was like the luckiest play I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, it was well done. Like, they had the vision. I think it was like an Enchantress Creep went in to give vision, and then it was, there was a charge through and like perfectly synced, and he even got the Roche kill somehow. Yeah. That was one of the wackiest plays I've ever seen. Yeah, it was really cool seeing Adfinum and FDL on Lando. I, FDL is an interesting mix of people. CC and C was a lot of fun to hang out with. He was really into Mafia. He was he was pretty animated on the couch as well, or so I was told. Um, and Adfinum, man, they they kind of stole the show a little bit. Those are the. It's always interesting to see the teams that are the underdogs coming into the summit because they're just so excited to be an event like that. Like they're playing on the fun stream. They're playing Jenga. They're outside playing pool. You know, they had the giant water slide. The Russian casters went on the water slide in between games during the finals. A couple of those did games started with up? two casters. I actually did not ride it. I did. I wore jeans that day, ah. so I was not equiped to go down the water slide. Didn't go oh. nude. Skinny dip down the slide. No, I, I didn't. But oh. uh, it was it was yeah, cool. Man. It was a good summit. I know what you're saying, dude. Those those teams, those up and comers, they're like cool dudes. They'll do anything. Give them yeah. a year though. Add fit them wins a TI, oh, and then yeah. all of a sudden they're too good for fucking interviews. They don't come to. Oh, sorry. We're not going to do the qualifiers. You have to invite us. Opening but. ceremonies. What are those? Oh, yeah, no. I don't All -star think so. match pass, guys. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Give it some time. You think there will be a, an all-star match at this TI? There's got to be, right? Of course. They do it every, all the time. They'll drag those miserable players out to do something fun. <laughs> Possibly, you know. And they're like, Lord. I just want to sit in my room and watch replays and... How, how dare they want to study for an $18 million tournament and not fuck around in, a, in an all-star match? They can literally handle two hours of, like, a fun thing for the fans. I mean, I, I agree. I, I think not it's a small fans. ass to play. Oh, God! <laughs> and where did this $18 million I mean, prize pool come from? Oh, just like... <laughs> to, to play devil's advocate, though, I, I will say there was a period of time where it felt like it was kind of overblown, where every tournament was, that had a notable yeah, prize pool had that as a stretch goal. And it's like, all right, today's the 1v1 tournament. Tomorrow, like, the first summit there is a special game every day it's like yeah. i think it should be a ti you know it's perfect for yeah. those big events to see the players on the stage mess around but i see how the players got burned out of it when you every star ladder they're like all right dendy i wonder if you're gonna get picked for the all-star match this time you know there's a there's three or four players that get picked for almost every match every <laughs> single time it's like dendy puppy arteezy you know uh burning's popular if he's at the event Nah, in all honesty, though, I mean, uh, you can't hate the players too much for that. I mean, some people nah. just like it. Some people don't. I understand that. The ones that do, though, those are the smarties, though. The guys mm -hmm. that always, the dendies, you know, the the uh, no-tails, the guys that are always in, those are the smarties, man. That's how you get fans. Sometimes you don't even have to be a good team. You just need to have a lot of fans to get invited. Look at Navi. Yeah, man. Invite him. All right, let's talk about Star Ladder a little bit. Anybody uh, been watching that sick land tournament in the BTS house? I have uh, not. A little bit. I didn't see any of the first day. I think it's actually on right now, so that's exciting. I think it's Fnatic yeah, versus CDC Youth. Yeah. yeah. I but, watched a couple of games last night, a couple of games the other day yesterday. Try to catch up on some of it, but it's looking pretty much as you expect, like Navi, two, two wanting Fnatic, the haters, silenced perhaps. You know, they lost game one. You should have seen the new page. <laughs> oh, Navi <laughs> sucks. They got invited to TI, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and then proceed to stomp them in the two following games so yeah there you navi go. dota beautiful it's an interesting disparity of teams like you've got navi eg digital chaos and secret now the top four in the winner bracket and then you've got fanatic cdc youth complexity and then this friend squad that is aloha dance g yoku always want to fly no fear so not a bad team but kind of a mismatch of ukraine russian players but those upper bracket matchups are pretty hype actually yeah, could be EG secret winner bracket finals. That could be pretty exciting. If if this was like the roster of the teams a year ago, you'd be like, oh, that just sounds like a standard tournament. Yeah, <laughs> but now it's like a lot of teams that are like, are they are they gonna be really good? Are they gonna have trouble still? I don't know. Yeah, kind of cool. Yeah, I mean DC fell a little flat at a summit. They're, they're a That's big question good. mark for me. Like going into TI, I could see them get it together and do really well, but I could also see them being a team that has high expectations that doesn't end up making it that far in the bracket, you know? Yeah, I feel bad for them. They did pretty well in Manila. They almost cracked top, top what? Top 
eight, nine. They almost Wait. got above tenth place, I think. Oh, um, yeah, I think it was eight. Yeah. The beginning. Yep. Oh, that's right. They, know, they were, they were they looking could. good, but I don't know what yeah. happened. I mean, that they, they got eliminated second round of the lower bracket at Summit 5 against Liquid, and it was a convincing 2-0. I mean, it, it looked like Liquid was on one level, DC was on the level below. That's, you know? But that's Liquid, though. Liquid's yeah. like a top top four team in the world for sure. Oh, yeah. Probably top three. I, mean, I would say it's better to be eliminated at the Summit, okay? Summit's a nice tournament. You hey, go there. Fair enough. You go there for the food, all right? You don't want to be in. <laughs> you don't want to be in the, the finals catering. and then showing off all your strats two weeks before TI. Show Is up. Is this the first meetup of the Revenge, by the way, of DC Secret? Uh, Is that right now? Well, it's this. this it's going to be an Rack upcoming game. match. Yeah. Is this oh, the first? As far as I can tell, this is the first time that Weeha and Misery have played Secret. Oh, how's that not getting mega hyped? I think that Dota is still broken, so nobody can run the stats to actually check. I'm looking over Dota buff, and I don't see any matchups. I don't think they have. It's possible. Secret doesn't play that many lands. Yeah, and they didn't make it like in the same brackets at the majors. Well, especially you know. um, (laughs) Yeah, they both got knocked out. Yeah, here come the May Maze. (laughs) Yo, that's gonna be good. It's gonna be some nice weather. Woo! Uh, yeah, should I want to see that shit at TI. Sorry, Starlander. Show yeah. me down the big stage, baby. Woo! Can't believe we're so close. Seven days or something, guys. Isn't it nuts? Yeah, it's kind of crazy that talent still hasn't been officially announced like publicly. There's been very little dialogue about that one the way or the other. workshop artists are invited. Though. Yeah, but I mean, they're That's going, good. so... That's good. But, yeah, I mean, Nahaz is the only announcement that we've heard. And, of course, now he's going to be coaching Complexity for those that miss, missed that announcement, which was I, a surprising turn of events. I didn't really see that coming. I, I didn't yeah, realize did I. Nahaz I was... I was in Lithuania. Yeah. I was I, like, fuck, am I fired? Like, what just happened? <laughs> I mean, the, the part that stood out for me is just that most of the coaches I can think of are either pro level players that aren't on a current team or it's a close friend like in in-house level player that scrims or has been involved with the player like mario who used to coach or that old liquid squad you know that kind of stuff yeah. but somebody like nahaz who has no top tier competitive history i mean it's like you know 3k mmr or something to be coaching a team based on his statistical analysis i think is pretty cool so what kind of stuff did you do for them trent uh i just do like preps for like um in a nutshell like things that you would want to know about the enemy team, like maybe like map movements or picks or stuff picks like that. and some other more detailed stuff. Uh, well, I mean, I guess everyone doesn't know. It's like ward maps and stuff I've been doing for like since last TI. They've had like ward maps of every team and like the different timings and like what's um, like common smoke places, all that kind of crap. So okay. uh, and then like hero priority. So like based like like comparing like the meta versus like a certain team. So you look at like where do they rank this hero as a team? And you use that when you're drafting to kind of think about how they're going to sync that up and then like common pairings and stuff like that. So yeah. it's, not, it's not coaching. I see a lot of people using the word coach. I really don't want to be called a coach because I think that gives me way too much credit. It's just an analyst. Thanks, it's, coach. Yeah. So yeah, basically, exactly. you, you yeah. gather a lot of data, you try to interpret it, and you say, hey guys, this is what I've come up with. Kind of make of it what you will. Is that more of the interaction than kind of a hands-on coaching type thing? Yeah, exactly. And then it's it's also like, I do do replay analysis for them as well, for like opponent teams to say things like, like you're going to commonly see this timing rotation. You're going to see these two players. Like if these two players are off the map, like for example, when Newbie's giant run, it was like always Chuan. Every single time. He organized mm. every single smoke gank, which I mean, it might sound a little bit weird, but it's like for the entire game, it would be the three, four, five. Literally, never left a triangle like this big. They would just <laughs> always move the entire map around together, and you just had like how TPing to like the the lane. It was like very systematic, and if you can actually see that, and like you can analyze like based on the mini map where certain people are, you can have a good idea as to where they might be moving. So it was all that kind of crap, but okay. um, not so much like literally the team I would know the least about in some ways would be complexity because I don't look at any of their own stuff. I'm not like a coach in that sense. <laughs> I see. That that's an that's interesting, interesting dynamic. You're all external looking at how they would, like how other yeah. teams match up, not you know, analyzing their mistakes, for example. That's that's kinda cool. So if, yeah. if we're about if we're able to guess what Nahaz is doing, um, considering that you do those kind of things, it's doubtful that, that he's gonna take that job from you because you're you are you are not they didn't fire you or anything, right? No, no, like I was literally like I said, I was in Lithuania and I just someone like was messaging me on Discord, They're like, Oh, what happened, dude? Like, oh what's going on? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I was like, what what's oh, going on? What are you guys talking about, guys? Like open up Reddit, I'm like, ah oh, fuck. Uh no, but uh 
no yeah so i'll still be working with them for like the group stages and everything um because that's when i'm most valuable right when you have like so many opponents that you just can't necessarily be ready for them all the time it's very handy to have like that big fact sheet maybe you can't replay view every single one as a team right so especially like ti5 was when i first worked with them and that's when we had that giant group stage right where it was like you played so many different teams you should have seen like these spreadsheets i had going man it was yeah. madness I'm kind of curious though, Trent, how did you get started doing that? That's one of those things, like we get a ton of messages, all of us casters in the Dota space, like I want to be a caster, I want to help, I want to do this, how do I break in? That's something that you're not an ex-pro player, so you didn't have just yeah. like that immediate in. How did you get to that level where the players, you know, respected what you had to say as an analyst? That's a great question. <laughs> no. Don't, don't, I was really scared for the day when someone finally asked this. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, my bad. I was just doing like those stat pop ups. Like, I really got to know that Dota very well just from like, because for like stat pop ups, which is where I started, it was like, you need to look it up like right away. See so if you know where everything is on there, you know, get a couple different tabs open. But just through that, I knew like all the power that that Dota had. I was like, holy shit, teams are not taking full advantage of this. Like, ward maps? No one had ward maps. Yeah. There are some people who literally put the same wards every game. And you can just be like, oh, hey, I just dewarded their ward without even knowing where they went. Um, same with like smokes and stuff. Tower timings can tell a lot about um, like like certain teams would always take like maybe the safe lane tower before other towers. They just always prioritize it. And you can just get in the data. So I see. So it gives you Basically, some intel on how you can react in those scenarios. You know, they're yeah. less likely to come back and defend or, or whatever. Those kind of patterns. It was cool. basically like beef. Uh, Beef asked someone who was involved, um, Brian, you know, that phage guy, he basically yep. talked to him. He was like, do you think there's anyone that could do a job like that if I wanted that for complexity? And so he recommended that they talk to me. Damn. And then I, so I was like, yeah, I can just do that. That's easy. Those standard stats. deviant connections, dude. Look yeah, at you. You know, all the hookups. So. Now, um, Slacks, I'm curious, how does, yeah. how does this level of analysis compare to what you provide for digital chaos? Because I know <laughs> you're in some sort of, uh, an analyst role over there, right? I don't, I don't want to call it a coach. I don't want to give you yeah. too much credit, but. People have life coaches. I like to think of myself as a spiritual coach, you know? When they play games, I light some incense. I play some sitar, you know? I get in that head. I get into a nice, relaxed space. You don't know how good you've ever played until you've had some hot stones on your shoulders during the match in a naked rubdown. I mean, don't be that guy, but the oils really play a part. No, nah, yeah. but I mean, I feel like that Nahaz is a very smart dude. He's a very energetic dude, and one thing about complexity is that they're a very emotional team. You know, yeah. they if they feel good, they'll win. If they feel shitty, they'll lose. And the Haas, being like a statistics professor, he's like a he's like a purge. He'll bring you down. Although he is, he can get very emotional. I don't know if that's a good combo. I think that's a he's, good. I think that's a benefit. If you're not playing on the team, but you're very in tune with dealing with strong emotions, which he is. He's like. Yeah. Just watch him play Mafia. The guy, you can tell he's very, very emotional in some ways. Like, he, he yeah. reacts to his emotions. He's going to know how to deal with his emotions, number one. He's married, so he's had tons of relationship, like a long distance or long duration relationship, working out problems. He's not in the team, so he does not, he can be an unbiased person. So he can cover all of those bases. So I think that, in in addition to his, like, good analysis, like, he's not a top MMR player, so yeah, he's not going to tell them, how to like rotate ganks, but he'll have suggestions, work at all the team problems, I'm sure, and do all those other things. Like it's it's not going to be like a typical pro player coach, I'm sure, but there's a lot of other benefits that he can provide, I think. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that too. And I think, like, oh, go ahead. I remember Swindles once, he tweeted out, this is a long time, it's like shortly after I started working with him, he was like, if anyone has an idea about like a hero or something, he said, I'm always looking for the next, and it was some Han hero or something that I guess was like suggested to him by like a <laughs> random fan. And he was like, he's very open to that kind of an idea. So I've always just gotten the the impression because like right when I started working with them as an analyst uh, and like, I, again, no pro experience or anything like that. Basically, they just said, hey, could you look at some replays for us and like tell us what you see? And I'm like, what? And then like, they had me like making videos. I was like doing highlights of plays and I was like, you'll see this pattern a lot. And I was like, what? Like, what the hell am I doing? How did I get here? But it's yeah. I think they're very willing to take that stuff and maybe they won't agree with it, but at least it gets conversation flowing. And that's kind of stuff that, again, Nahaz would be very good at, too. Right. Because he can once again bring up that stuff. That mentality is actually really smart as a pro player, because yeah. a lot of pro players, it's when you're a high level player and somebody that's bad at Dota gives you advice, it's really annoying. You're like, shut the fuck up. You don't know <laughs> yeah. anything. You know? Like, cause half the time it's, it's really unfounded or they think about something that like causes so many other problems that they don't realize cause they're bad players. They're like, why don't I just buy eggs on Kunko rush every game? Yeah. It does. It, it's like, it's like having Magnus, then I have Magnus and have Kunko, you know, they do, they say stuff like that. And, and it's just 
makes you mad. But the real the reality is that if you have more eyeballs giving you suggestions, it's going to get you creative. Like if you're not necessarily creative yourself, um, it's just going to give you more ideas to then think about. If somebody says like, oh, this here is really OP, then you'll think about it. It's the same in pro games, I feel. When I watch a pro game and I see a player do something that I wouldn't have ever done, I think about why they're doing that. And then usually I can figure out the benefits of what they're doing. But if I hadn't seen them gone like 411 on Ricky, I never would have been like, hey, maybe we should max Smoke Cloud first, you know? Like it just opens yeah. your brain a little bit. So the, the, the willingness of him to like take suggestions like that and possibly get this hero that they actually think is OP and play them seriously is, is it's a potential advantage if they figure out a hero before somebody else and they use it at a charm yeah. and do super well. I mean, there, there's another team now that actually has a, a non-pro analyst, and it's Fnatic. Uh, Kips, she's a was a writer, I guess, at Join Dota, yeah. um, and a mod as well. She was a cosplayer at last TI. She won the what was it, Slacks? That she made the Elder Titan weapon. Yeah, that's right. That Soylent thing. The um... oh, she did. I didn't know that. That was me. Yeah, that's oh, why damn, I'm asking dude. you about it. <laughs> I made that chick's career, bro. <laughs> no. Well, I mean, you She's got her great. to TI, She's, yeah. She was my travel buddy. Um, mm -hmm. in uh, yeah, we we did a lot of traveling in the uh, after the Valve event and stuff, and we were always on the same plane, ha plane hanging out. Yeah. Very cool person. Wait, isn't that the chick from Mineski? Ah, shoot. No. No. I might be thinking of the wrong chick. No, we're good. No, you're, you're, you're thinking the summit of, on the couch. Yeah, you're thinking, you're thinking of, of the right chick. She was your travel buddy. It was, remember after uh, Frankfurt, we went down and got breakfast, and Fnatic was there, and she was sitting with them, and you yeah. said, hey, travel buddy. Yes. She's great. She's yes. a real smarty. Uh, yeah. Really breaking in the field. Wow, that's crazy. You know, you just, sometimes someone makes an Elder Titan costume, you have them win a contest, and uh, turn yeah. into a Dota person. <laughs> But Ooh. it is cool. It is very different, though. You know, like collecting that data and going through it, and more pointing out, you know, patterns and uh, you know enemy teams. Right? I mean, I'm sure they, they still have a coach. I, I don't who who is their the fanatic coach. They have a, an analyst and a coach. Because now I, I think like for TI teams get three slots, right? Like you get a manager, a coach, and an analyst, right? That you get to bring along that are that are part of the yeah. I think so. or you get a part sub. of your crew. Yeah, it or would be it... a sub and then two, like a manager and a coach, I think is like okay, that's... the general breakdown. Oh, like, I see. Whatever okay. you want for those three slots, I do believe. All right, yeah, I, I forgot about subs. That, that's a fair point. So, so you're saying you're getting kind of screwed, Trent, because they have so many support staff. They have, <laughs> Josh. Like, they have two managers, <laughs> yeah. and now they're going to bring the Haas, and not, they can only bring three people. Sorry, man, that sucks. Yeah, that's life. You're out, dude. All right. Don't yeah. worry. Moonduck's got your back, Trent. I know. I tried to get that team badge, but he said he's got 30 people on the list, and I was like... <laughs> 30 people who gave stats all year i don't <laughs> i don't pretty... know how many people have won you guys majors okay oh they won what no <laughs> close to uh, it's probably majors. girls let's be real Damn. Yeah. yeah it's always girls yeah this family my... girlfriends that's the life though that's this all right is my life coach <laughs> hey somebody suggested a life stress. coach unironically at summit five i think conrad brought that up actually for a team he's like hey life yeah, coach could be a good option is kind of yeah like a, he's like a life coach that knows Dota. I think is the general idea behind that one. I mean, it's All important. Right. You got you got to work out team issues, and it helps to have an unbiased person. Mm -hmm. um, and I know Blitz does some analysis for for Liquid. He definitely does. But everybody touts him as the life coach or whatever, and that he helps morale. And that's probably what it is. As soon as an issue starts, he brings it up. If there's like a miscommunication in game, he he brings like a secondhand opinion that can like tell somebody if they're wrong. That way, they don't let that stew. They talk about it and they get it over with. Yeah. And you know, he can be the one that people vent to to get that away because. Like when we're in Korea, for example, if like one player is underperforming, the other players talk about it and be like, oh man, Purge has really been underperforming, that sucks. They don't necessarily tell you right away. So then yeah. if, you, if somebody talks to Blitz about that, Blitz can then go have a, like a really constructive meeting with the guy and be like, look, is something wrong? Like you've been playing bad recently. Like we know that you normally play better. Like what's going on? And that person's going to relieve stress. Like basically just keep stress as low as possible to give yeah. you the best chance of winning the game based on your skill level. I mean, I definitely could see Nahaz fitting in that role because the fact that he just is older and he's a college professor, the way he speaks, the way he carries himself, you just, you sort of respect what he has to say. You know, if you're emotional and Nahaz says, hey, just calm down, take a breather. I feel like that's somebody you, you might be inclined to listen to. That's not, compared to Slacks, it's just like, dude, you need to be, <laughs> I don't know, maybe Slacks would be a good life coach. I don't think about it. You're fucking garbage. <laughs> you be a motivator. <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh, life coach, God. what a cushy job. Holy shit. I mean, My friend's mom was a life today? coach. You that was like literally her job. Jesus Christ. Damn. I don't know how you get hooked up with that gig, though. You just have to have the right energy. Go to those self help seminars and then trick other people into saying that you learn stuff. <laughs>
<laughs> there you go. Did you guys see the uh, Mineski roster, uh, roster change? The legendary yeah. Singaporean star miracle? As well as Ninja Boogie now going to be on uh, old Mineski there. Oh. It's pretty there's exciting. A, there's a lot of Singaporeans coming off of Army. I think um, uh, X Freedom should be done soon. He played with Korea oh, Season wow. 4. Yeah. And he went to Army right afterwards. And that was the end of 2014. So he yeah. should be done... He should be done pretty soon also. Probably similar to Miracle. But Miracle's really good. Yeah, but he had to do Army, and that really sucked for him. Yeah. Our, our boy Mike Ross, Ninja Boogie, haven't seen much out of him recently. Uh, I mean, he played, he's played on a few teams. I think he's he been off of the team on, for like, a He's back on, you know, Rave again, right? Yeah. And then... I yeah. Mean, dude, Rave has just sparsely. looked so... Like, Mr. Cat, they, were, they didn't even make it out of the groups. We did a format where there's 10 teams, 5 people groups, and the bottom team doesn't make it through. They were beat by Execration, Mineski, Power Gaming, and the Mongols in the group stage. That, that, I think that group, honestly, all of the Mr. Cat teams have really impressed me, though. Yeah. And I think they're all just as good as, like, your Except average Rave. any I, regional they didn't two team. me. Or, or tier two. And not, and so, like, excluding, like, the best NA teams and, like, the next top three, I would say that most of the C teams are better or as good as, like, the, the fifth to eighth place of NA regionals. Right, right. Competition's pretty tight there, yeah. So we'll see what that means for the Neski squad. They're going to be debuting in this new tournament that I didn't even know existed. What is it? The the Pro Gamers League? It's like a yeah, two-day LAN in China. That's I think it starts tomorrow and the next day. Maybe it starts tonight, like our time, morning for, for China. That's why we had to move around the Mr. Cat schedule because Mineski is going to be at the LAN, and they're in the uh, opening round of the playoffs. But I don't even know who's casting this tournament. Like I haven't heard anything about it except for Mineski telling me that they needed uh, they needed a reschedule. It's a hundred thousand dollar tournament with some decent teams too. MVP Phoenix, CDC, and then a lot of the tier two teams. Ehome Keen, I love that name by the way. Ehome Keen, they always have the best names. I think we should start a Moonduck Dot Passion. Yeah. <laughs> do you, Do you think they just like Googled like <laughs> words and they found like synonyms and they're like Keen? Yes, they're Keen yes. to win. Yes. CDC, good. CDC good. Avengers. I think they just pick a letter and try and find a word because there's like some of those teams have like an A, B, C, and D squad. Just like I think eventually they were just like you know what's cooler than that? We'll just like go with cool words. Potential. Keen. <laughs> e potential. I, I like vitality as well. Yeah. Vitality. I hate all those team names. They're too long. It's always like. Yeah. Signature, period, trust, and I'm putting them in my expert overlays and it like breaks yeah. the fucking formatting. Like get a small word, like limit it under ten characters, please. <laughs> That's like reasonable. It is kind of like, cool. Double words. MVP Phoenix is gonna play though, especially so close to TI. Like at this point a lot of teams are playing in that one last final event and then they're gonna prepare for the main event. This is coming I guess it's around the same time as Star Ladder, but I, I didn't think they were gonna play in any more events until Seattle. I mean they haven't played since Manila, right? I don't know if I've seen them. I maybe maybe I think so. Oh. We Wait, invited them to Mr. Cat, and they, they, they declined. Who, <laughs> <we> MVP? <laughs> yeah, MVP. <laughs> I mean, Fnatic was invited, too, in full disclosure. They also declined. Surprise, <laughs> surprise. <laughs> How could you? I, I honestly, Mr. I don't K. think it matters at all. Like, honestly, the Mr. Cat games are still really good. Like, their yeah, teams they get, are, nobody uh, knows, but... They get 2 0 by Execration and Nanyang. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Execration's like, looking hot, games are good. Yeah. Dude, they it's, shocked me. Like, they you crisp, asked me, like, they? two months ago who the worst team in SEA was, Execration would have been close to my list. Really? Like, just in all, like, the general qualifiers they did for Epicenter and a bunch of other tournaments, it was just always Execration that were just, like, so disappointing. And I was like, <laughs> ah, what is this? I don't know. Maybe I just caught all their bad games or something, but they were not up there. Like, I would have rated, like, rave above them because they'd even look good. You know, a couple of Broodmother Cheese wins. They're still wins. Yeah. But uh, they've just shown up. And even today, they looked really good. Yeah, that region is very topsy turvy. Uh, Teemo looked really good for a few months, and then the opposite happens for a while. It's crazy how fast it fluctuates. So, all right, let's change the subject here. Two two last topics I want to talk about. One of them's big, one of them's small. Uh, Trent, right before this, you actually linked this article OG parts ways with Hitbox. This is interesting just because um, I thought this was a kind of a crazy sponsor to begin with. OG was a team that started uh, as sort of just a group of players and they put up results pretty early on you know if, um, it's kind of an all-star lineup and og signed hitbox as one of their first big sponsors i i oh i've always wondered how big of a deal that is for like to be that that first premier sponsor on a team like that that must have been a big contract and it's it's such a weird business model for those smaller platforms that, that are going up against twitch I, yeah. I don't i don't know how they do it honestly like their burn rates must be 
extreme. And you look at, it says in this article, like, Hitbox raised a million dollars in their seed A financing and uh, four million, or no, they, they got uh, one million in their seed and four million in their series A funding in early 2015. That's not that much money when you're talking about these massive six figure sponsorships, you know, and then they have to pay out people on their platform. You have to pay all the employees. Like, h how do these little streaming platforms do it? How are they still treading water, man? I, well, I don't get it. I mean, that they're getting free money essentially from their funding, first of all, kind of, you know, that yeah, but they need but... to use it to eventually become solvent. So at some point, they need exposure because everybody uses Twitch so much. So they have to sponsor or advertise somewhere, in which case, a pro team is pretty good. Um, the problem is that. And they always enforce like streaming contracts. Like I'm guaranteed that they they said, okay, your your OG players, you guys have to stream like ten hours a month or something minimum. Yeah. But it's more yeah. likely to be like fifteen or twenty. And then these players have to go stream on a website that almost nobody watches. And this is not old. They're not new for Notel. I mean, he was on Fnatic when they were partnered with Azubu. Was it yeah. Azubu for? It was Azubu. Because yeah. I remember they yeah. called it a boo boo. <laughs> yeah, so they just streamed on Azubu always. And yeah, they probably got paid a lot of money. I'm sure they're getting salaries at least like you yeah. know it's 2k a month or something each plus streaming hours maybe but um i mean for their first sponsor and, and you said they're an all-star team i wouldn't have agreed when they first formed they were not an all-star team like yeah. uh they were like the no tail rummages. was good yeah kind of like, were, crit, more man. like, like at the time no tail was not thought to be core wise that everybody was like there's no way no tails can be a good core and he played a little rough the first couple months he's really playing well now he's improved his yeah. shitload i think he's very much up there with carries um but crit was basically pub star and like he's been on tons of teams for years but he never really gotten like critical success um he was kind of like, like an a year and, and a half like he yeah. hadn't been doing anything yeah i mean he's been playing like since NEL. like the start of dota 2 i remember casting him like in one of the first dota 2 teams he was on this team uh we has asians i think Mm -hmm. I swear to God, he was on there. He's been on tons of teams yeah, forever. Yeah, he's moved all over the place. But he never has really made it, so he wasn't going to be able to sell a lot sponsorship-wise. Miracle was a top MMR player, but he hadn't been on a team before. They didn't know if he was going to flop. Fly had been on a lot of teams, but never had, like, amazing success. This is definitely... OG has definitely been his best success. And Moon so, was on Complexity right before he switched, yeah. right? Yeah, and they, they did. Had... They performed well at TI kind of out of nowhere, and he seemed like he was going to be a good player, but he didn't have, like, a ton of exposure. Like, right. they've definitely created their fame for themselves now. Now they're all, like, all-stars, essentially. But when they first formed, that definitely affected whether or not they got good money from Hitbox. And it's possible That's that now fair. that they've, they're have they essentially, like, top three team in the world guaranteed, that they could just say, all right, we're not getting we're getting good money from Hitbox, but probably not a shitload. We could easily get more money from a different streaming sponsor. If they didn't really want to cover them, it could be yeah. Twitch. It could be Panda other TV. places. Yeah, that's a good oh, yeah. that's, that's legit, especially if they won majors. Then their Chinese audience is actually huge. Yeah, They could stream Panda TV and get like eight times the money or something. Even yeah, it seems like they want to win. And even on this point, if they wanted to go to Switch and they wanted to stream a lot, I mean, they would get a lot of viewers on any of their individual streams for the most part. Yeah. Like they could push it. That's the kind of content Twitch would be happy to advertise. So, you know, you might not get as much just straight up. Here's a big sponsorship from Twitch, but... You know, the exposure is potentially worth a lot more when you have those big numbers. But yeah, uh, yeah that's that's the end. Depends of... what they want. The sad Gosh, part is, though, that like imagine your hitbox like you bankrolled this team. They actually became something. But like, what did hitbox actually gain out of it? Well, that's the do you thing. Think there like... was enough exposure. Like, did do you know anyone who like actually I know like yeah. two people that switched to streaming to hitbox. You know what I mean? I'm pretty sure that's all hitbox had. <laughs> Well, it's so huge offensive. brand awareness, but does that actually turn into activations where people see that logo and go, oh, what's Hitbox? Oh, cool. It's a streaming platform. I've been looking for one of these. Like, I don't think that converts people have from Twitch. Have you guys Twitch. ever been on a Hitbox, dude? They have rage faces. Oh, Ooh. that's pretty. Look Those out. are some classic May Mays that's there, like guys. A, that's a 2011 <laughs> meme. What yeah, it actually, I can't stand memes, seeing guys. them. Yeah, it's actually, I went on Hitbox once and I saw those things. I'm like, I'm fucking out. It was like such yeah. a turn -off. They should kill well, them and just get like the, the phone emotes. That would be the play right now. But yeah, it's too late. Like Better Twitch TV just got them and now it's just, it's over. Well, yeah. I don't know. Like, yes, they got more exposure from OG doing well. But what they if they, if Hitbox is going to be successful, like a new streaming platform, I feel like the only way it works is if you grab current streamers that are huge. Yeah. Like I'm saying, like yeah. Sing Sing, Admiral Bulldog, like people that will bring their fan bases over. But if you're like, I, mean, I think Notel had pretty popular streams, but it wasn't like insane. And the rest of the team had nothing from my knowledge. Yeah. So if you take like yeah. one streamer that's kind of popular and he streams over there, he's going to get a couple hundred viewers max because nobody wants to go to Hitbox. Yeah, like and it's I, just 
I I've literally never grow. been on Twitch and been like, oh, no one I like is streaming. I guess I'll check Hitbox. Well, like, and I watch streams like all day, and that has yeah. literally never happened once. I'll just open Netflix, dude. I th like, it's not oh. happening. I think Hitbox is HTML5, though. I think that is the it one is. leg up that they've had over Twitch, Twitch just... and Twitch just pushed it out for Turbo users. So that niche that they had is about to disappear as well. It's they've only been for 1080p Turbo. for like a year. Yeah. Twitch has. I mean, sorry, Hitbox has. Yeah. So they, they, they've had it, but I mean, that's just not enough. Uh, you, people still want to go where they're there's just that sense of community with twitch i think twitch is one of the first companies in, in recent esports that really understood how important it is to be cool like have that reputation you know, they were the guys that very early on were like yeah let's throw a party open bar fuck it yeah here's here's another credit card you know they just they really were into that oh cool you're into games hey you should check out our platform bringing people in making them feel a part of something you know branding those twitch after parties the twitch lounges creating a cool place for people to hang out it cost them a lot of money, but I mean, it built yeah. this incredible brand that people are like attached to now, like TwitchCon. You know, that the amount of just people that are obsessed with Twitch community and culture at this point is kind of absurd. Honestly, it's it's huge. I remember, like, I mean, keep in mind that Twitch started like five years ago. They started around 2011, and before that, they were own 3D or they were um, Justin, Justin TV. TV. Mm -hmm. So it's Justin TV. We used to stream Dota on Justin TV back in Dota One days, and then now, then Twitch comes out, and then five years later or four years later, Hitbox comes out. Like, and they're expecting to be successful. Like, I, I just yeah. can't, I, I, I feel like the investors going into Hitbox are just gambling on the offset that, that it happens to work. It's like, oh, okay, I can invest $2 million and it might turn into a billion in five years or something, you know? Yeah. But if I lose that 2 million, whatever, that was a pretty good gamble, you know? Two yeah. out of, two out of a thousand. That was my gamble there. Not bad. Lost Guys, we're it. 18 viewers below the highest Dota 2 stream on Hitbox right now. And that's I'm sad. We're, 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 we're competing with Starliner. That, that yeah. speaks to, <laughs> well, to what Hitbox I is doing. Right. I feel like Starliner only better. on that? No, Starliner's on Twitch. No, no, no. We're it's competing with Hitbox, he means. Yeah. No, no. I mean, because uh, who, what's who's the biggest streamer on Hitbox right now? Oh, I don't know. I don't know who it is. Someone just posted they had 488. <laughs> this is so, God, I just get such a good feeling. I love it. Uh, Nick No Name was all over my shit when Hitbox came out. Oh, Twitch is such garbage. And those that was fucking, that was why. These hipster bitches with their it's, Hitboxes and their fucking no. Discord. Come to Discord, bro. All right, Discord's, so Discord's legit though. Yeah, oh, you wait, dude. Just wait. You just wait. Yeah. That shit, dude. Him jumping to Hitbox. I mean, I don't know him super well. I've only talked to him once at an after party, but it seemed like it was very much like a lot of people. They see Twitch do something, and they, they get some conspiracy theories, and they're like, Twitch are awful. They're yeah. terrible. They're fucking everybody over. I'm ditching. And then they and they stuck to it for a while. And whatever. If that's how, how he wants to live his life, that's fine. But, like, <laughs> they're not an evil company. Like, yes, they're a huge yeah. company, and yeah, they're owned by Amazon now. But, I don't know. Like, I, I know you guys don't get the same, perf or, like, the way you don't see the same way, because you don't meet the people. But I've been to Twitch offices. I've met, like, high-level Twitch people. I've been to parties with them for like four or five years at esports parties like they're all basically just gamers i don't know i i, I yeah. think they're a fine company yeah they make mistakes and sometimes there's that period of time for like months and like, like the beginning of dota 2 where like their server capacities kept running out so like every like six months the servers would get full and yeah. then the lag would happen in europe and then they would put new oh, servers yeah. in and then the lag would happen in na and everybody would complain and they put new servers in and the lag would happen in europe again and everyone would start complaining and they put new servers in there's always gonna be like shit happening but like Conspiracy theories. That's like my mo the thing I get most upset about on Reddit threads and the Dota 2 subreddit. As soon as somebody comes out with a conspiracy theory, I'm just like, guys, relax a little bit, please. Every I love time. conspiracy theories on Reddit. Come on, man. You ever heard right about half of them? You ever hear about the uh, the hidden pool, bro? <laughs> is it Dota related? <laughs> it is actually. Okay. The Tell hidden me. pool, you know? The behavior right. Maybe this is our story time. The hidden pool. We don't, we don't want to talk about the hidden pool, do we? The shadow people. pool, you know? Shadow pool, bro. Like being shadow banned on Reddit, but you're in a pool of only toxic shut up, people dude, in shut Dota. Up. I've done oh, a lot of research. Thing? That's what you're talking about? I've done a lot of research. I, I've dug up all the facts. I've gone to the dev forum. I've seen the post, as they call it, on the hidden pool. I've seen it all. I'm going to do a tell-all series you don't think it's more? It. You don't think it's likely? I mean, it does track your behavior score. Surely it would influence the matchmaking. No, dude. We don't talk about that. People that talk about the hidden pool disappear bro if you look at any of the hidden pool posts on reddit the account's been deleted almost every one of them we don't talk about that shit <coughs> we've said too much let's move on to the next thing wow <coughs>
Valve will take you out, all right? All right. Well, we better jump to our last topic that I'm sure Valve will love as much. Uh, gambling and esports. Okay. Cease and desist have been <laughs> issued. Oh, man. What a shit show. It really has been. So, uh, I mean, you guys follow Counter-Strike, at least I know Purge does. A, I don't watch Counter-Strike at all. And this is sort of where the whole thing started. It was with a lot of the, the casino-style sites around CS skins and that kind of stuff that really got the big flags going in this lawsuit that brought a lot of public attention onto Valve, right? Isn't that kind of where it started? It's it's a very compounded process. For, first issue is number one. If you guys don't watch CSGO or understand or play the game, the skins in it are very valuable and for good reason because think about it this way if i if i like pugna and i really like the bzz pugna set i can buy it but i can only use that fucking set every time i play pugna which is how often if you don't main that hero and play that hero 80 percent of the time your items are not seen it's more of like we're collectors we collect all the items that we kind of like and we sometimes yeah. use them because there's a hundred heroes like you don't play 100 games very often for most players and in right. counter-strike though every fucking competitive game you play you will almost you will use an m4 and you will use an ak if those are the guns you prefer you will use them every single time you play and when somebody dies on your team because you die in a round and you have to wait until the round's over you start spectating somebody else on your team so if slacks dies every round because he's bad he'll start spectating me and he'll see my really cool ak skin and he's gonna see how many kills i have on it and he has to watch me play the game and i can like press a button on my keyboard that lets me like show my gun to myself which then if anyone's watching they have to look at it too oh and if i drop it and my opponents pick it up they can see what my gun looks like like it's so much more valuable so right 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 there plus knives and shit like yeah items are way more valuable in csgo it's like and a whole meta of this it, it's, oh yeah it's very it's huge like items are so expensive in csgo because they have value and the trading that you can do, it's like unrestricted because they didn't have to be limited by like the Chinese market being against gambling or whatever. So CS CS market's like really cool. So you put that on top of gambling because, you know, Dota 2 Lounge has existed forever. It translated to the CSGO Lounge and it just got deeper and deeper. And eventually what happened is there started being scandals because some fucking idiots are way too greedy about their money. And they started creating gambling sites and abusing it for obscene amounts of money because they're like, wow, there's a lot of items being traded. I want a piece of that. So yeah. they, dis they, they pay somebody to develop a site and then they start fucking rigging it and advertising it using their stream and oh, they yeah, do it in not ways disclosing it. And they I have hundreds zero of thousands problem of dollars. with that. Those dudes are probably millionaires. You serious? They probably are, but they, they literally are, yeah. did something ultra illegal. And because they've done this now, <laughs> not saying Easy. that gambling shouldn't have been outlawed by Valve at some point. It probably should have because it was starting to get ridiculous. Yeah. But think about, you know, like think about the FTC violation stuff. Like, YouTube stuff was a little bit shady before. Like, people would do reviews and stuff and not say anything about it um, without disclosing. But the the idea of going this deep into gambling means that, like, it's just going to bring the hammer down more often now. And maybe that's not... I don't know. Like, I mean, maybe that should also happen because technically it's illegal. But Well, that was why like Vulcan like, folded shop. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that was... Vul Vulcan literally completely pull, uh, pulled the brakes on their model because they There's were getting investigated. now. Yeah, now they're um they're I, transitioning. I can't remember what it they is, bought though. Twitch alerts. That's what it is. They, ah, they yeah, finally yeah. made it public. I said, I knew about that for a while, but we couldn't they talk did? about it. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's public. Yeah, they made an announcement about it. Oh so, my god, no! Vulcan I mean, great. owns Twitch alerts. Yeah, I mean, I always been a fan. Not fishing Vulcan. for Vulcan sponsorships anymore, guys. I I've had my days of selling out for Vulcan. I'm pretty over it. But I think they were. <laughs> somebody told me that they were they were being investigated by the FBI. Like that whole thing started. Instead of trying to fight it, they're like, you know what? We made our money. We spent all of it. Let's just fire everybody and fold up shop before this gets more serious. And now they're going to pivot into something else esports related. But that sounds it's, yeah. pretty cool. It's yeah. like people people just come into the scene and they they don't have as many morals. And they're like, yeah, I'll make a shitload of money in the short term, even though it's definitely illegal. It just hasn't been enforced yet. So I'll, I'll make the money and then get out. Totally cool. Yeah. Like I, I really I was reading some of the cases. I found this website that was talking about esports betting. And they wrote a lot of really good investigative articles about things. And like... There's a lot of illegal shit that happened, actually. Like, there's probably going to be people that go to jail from this. Really? First of all, FTC, FTC violations are there, but they're, I mean, they're, they're basically encouraging their, their viewers to gamble, even though they're all young. They're lying about flips and stuff. Like, I read oh. this one article about one of the, and they were like, always Call of Duty people that switched to CSGO, which I thought was... Yeah. Well... Anyways, like they, they would do stuff like they'd get a they'd get a sponsorship. Uh, I I read uh, Moe's, M O E that guy. He's a pretty popular CS:GO streamer. Basically, he he entered into a contract with the, this website guy, and it was a fair betting site. But the owner of the server, like the owner of the website, could see what the roles were going to end up being oh, ahead of time. Yeah. So he at first he he encouraged he he brought up there was Skype logs that were leaked. Basically, was that he was like, hey, do you want to know the upcoming flips? 
and the guy and the mo was like oh that sounds a little shady man that's that was the chat that was supposed to but in the future he started doing it and it yeah. was initiated in both ways and and the way that mo uh, i th- thought that we responded to everything was like really shady he was like sort of trying to blackmail he was being really shifty about yeah. sticking to contracts and shit it's just like it's like basically all the people that are wrapped up to these things really seem like they're literally the scum of the esports scene they're willing to do shady things they're willing to literally gamble away and like hurt people like think think about it this way he got mo got this deal where the owner of the site would give him free money to play with but what happens when you play with that money you're playing against real people that yeah, put probably thing, right? real money in and then he's swinging the bets that means he's literally stealing money from people yeah you're literally stealing money you're gambling with fake money which means you're not hitting the same margins again you're hitting like 100 percent margins and then you're swinging the bets, you guarantee win against those people. That's fucking stealing and cheating. Yeah, like, bro. But I wouldn't be surprised if those people go to jail. Like, I, I don't understand how that's not super illegal. They, Even if it's it fake super money. illegal, it's just they play Counter Strike, dude. Force. Are they people though? It's, it's <laughs> honestly a fun game. Let's be real. But like, <laughs> are they people though? This kind of shit players? is fucking God, illegal, it and it's super immoral. And yeah. So, I, these people need to be shunned, honestly. I mean, have you up. ever listened to Thorin? Are they people, dude? <laughs> Or are they- <laughs> so the biggest thing, though, that like the biggest takeaway from this <laughs> is that when it comes to in-game cosmetics, that shit is not regulated. And that's how this thing started with just a couple of little sites and people have kept pushing the envelope, pushing the envelope, pushing the envelope. And now you have these big gambling operations that are just unregulated. That was part of the whole poker shutdown in America is that poker stars in full tilt were accused of doing illegal stuff. They, you know, taking skimming too much money off the top, not holding a high enough if everybody wanted to cash out. All that kind of stuff that's against the the laws in America, and these companies, of course, are not following those regulations at all. So it's it, it's a problem, you know. But there, so this doesn't stop real money betting from Dota, though, right? Like all of these betting sites that are legal, proper bookies yeah. in whatever country they're registered in, that's not going away. This is for websites that are using the the Dota API, correct, with bots yeah, and, and that's, stuff that's like that. That's the distinction. When it first came out, everybody said, "Oh, you, you're not allowed to advertise those sites. They're banned." They're not banned. What Valve specifically said is, "You are banned from using bots to trade items for a gambling site." So these gambling sites that all exist, they can still function if that site hypothetically paid people to manually do all of the trades. They're not going to do that, obviously, because there's too right. many trades to do. But if you if I if Slacks was the bot for Dota 2 Lounge, I could say, all right, Slacks, take these thirty-five dollars in items and put them into the server. I need to use them for trading. You sure and can, Slacks, boss. Slacks would accept the <laughs> trade and he would put the items into the system and then I would be credited on my account and then I could gamble with it. Yeah. That's legal for what Valve wants. They don't want to prevent that. So it seems like the way they want to do it is they want the market to still exist, mm-hmm. which is probably for the best because the market is very beneficial to get an item you want. But they don't want it to be gambling. And yeah. it, there was also some reports that they had been doing some things like limiting the API to certain websites. So some websites that were really fucking over Valve internally, they were actually fighting kind of a secret war about it. But this now it's all public, essentially, is kind of what it seems like is happening. So I don't everything's know why we never had um, like roulette and Dota. Like that's just I've never really heard about like roulette Dota sites. Like CSGO, from what I understand, a lot of top streamers, as you said, it was like roulette. I mean, it's like you put in an item. Spin the wheel, yeah. you win everyone's item. Like, that's not something... I mean, the like, culture's just, just so different, cheap. though. I mean, I remember, was it Summit 3? Whichever one was, like, the sellout Summit when we were doing all the Vulcan plugs, community hated it, and it was a little over the top. But you look at the Counter-Strike subreddit, and everything's sponsored by betting sites. You know, Thorn would start every video, go to Alpha Draft, you know, this kind of stuff. And it seemed like there was just a difference in general culture and tone in terms of how the Dota community reacted to betting sponsors coming in and how the Counter-Strike community reacted to betting sponsors well, coming in. I- I guarantee that's because it was CSGO, not Dota. And not because of the game. It's because of the function of the items. The first point I made. Yes. The items are worth far more. And I read that in one of the articles, actually. There was uh, estimations that there was like $7 billion made from items a year. Wow. Isn't that insane? That is insane. It was like $7 billion. It was something insane. Yeah. Like how many items are swapped around. That's how big the market was. But there's still a big disparity there. So I think the CS scene just pushed the envelope a lot faster. Like Dota just didn't get to the point of like the roulette casinos yet at that. You don't think it was ever going to get there? One more sense. Okay. Uh, Of that $7 billion, it was like 80% was CSGO. Oh, oh, I thought it was seven billion for all of CS. That was for everything. You mean all for Valve. all for all Steam, all market Steam trading. market stuff. And eighty okay. percent was just CS:GO. Okay. Dota two is probably number two. I think it said that Dota wow. two is still commonly traded, but like Dota items are not what they were before. They were no. th- th- Dota Damn. items like three years ago and or two years ago were really lucrative, but now they're decreasing. Like Valve is changing a lot of things that make right. them less expensive. 
which that is probably That spread is insane, though. All of the marketable items, like some 80% of that was CSGO. And that's why they advertised in CS most likely. So they probably <laughs> offered more money, more contracts. You would have probably seen yeah. way more betting sponsorships in Dota if the trading was more lucrative. Right. Wow. That's actually kind of mind-blowing. That's, that's a number to digest right there. I mean, I can understand the stance, though. I mean... Overall, just psychologically, it's just messed up. <clears throat> you go to these people that can like be easily influenced with like these roulette kind of things where it's this Skinner box of you never know if you're going to win or... Oh, wait, sorry. I'm, I'm thinking about Dota 2 chests in game. Sorry. No, I mean, those are fine. Those... No <laughs> problem there. Everything's fine. No, no. It, it's those gambling sites, though. Those are the real bastards, you know. But... Quite the commentary there, Slack. No, so. no. I'm that was down. good. That was a mistake on my end. My bad. Sorry about that. I love the in-game stuff. I mean, that's definitely an area you could criticize them for. That you know, the the return on value for for opening chests is awful. CS:GO and in Dota. Yeah, yeah. no, 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 nothing morally wrong there. I don't think they even think took out the unusuals. Like, I mean, they replaced it with something different, sort of. But like, even then, I can remember that being like the only motivation. I bought probably under ten keys ever in my career of Dota two and TF two. And I was just like, man, that'd be so cool if I got an unusual. unusual. And then I came from TF2, and I was like, unusual couriers? Oh, yo, yeah, let me I get mean, some of these keys. Dude, there, there's a reason that a, a lot of startups that work in a microtransaction business model space hire at least one psychologist on staff to play into that. You know, that's what microtransactions yeah. are all about. The idea of veiling the value or, oh, if I just buy this for 99 cents five times, that's somehow cheaper than one big bulk purchase. All of that is, you know, sort of social construction, like humans it's like a weird way of interpreting value you know same with gambling oh well there's a chance that i could i should just try one or two i could get lucky you know that that's a real that has a real effect on consumers you know i, I think one important difference though about slacks's point about chess being gambling though is that it's different levels of how it can grow like if you're opening mm. chess in csgo there's a limited amount of items that you can get right it's like based on an individual thing that you want Base, or unless you're thinking about it in money, in which case, whatever. That that then yes, that can go stream. But if you transition from unboxing items to transitioning to roulette, which is pure and simple gambling. <laughs> yeah. You're yeah. putting money in and you're trying to double it, or you're trying to quadruple it, or whatever. Or you could get wild and, and multiply it by fourteen. Like that is that's different than saying, I'm gonna buy ten keys and open and see if I get a knife. And you're like, Oh, I didn't win. Well, let's try it again. If you compare that to somebody who's gambling for money, their money's gonna go up and up and they're gonna start betting more and more because they're like, oh, I can make more money, bet more, bet more. And then all of a sudden you lose it all. Yeah. Like I, I've written this story on Reddit a couple of times, mm -hmm. but I know somebody in real life, 14 years old, got like 10 keys for his birthday or something. He unboxed a $400 knife. Then he goes on a gambling site, 14 years old, and he gambles it up to $3,000. And he bets it all and loses it all. <laughs> like, wow. like he could have had $3,000 <laughs> if he just stopped. But he's a fucking 14 year old kid. Like he does not understand like he's probably never had more than four hundred dollars cash in his whole life. Yeah. You know, if he hasn't had a job before and he's fourteen, he shouldn't. I hope. So, like, yeah. that's the kind of shit that it does. Yeah. Maybe if he gets a four hundred dollar knife, he trades it out for dollars and he turns it back into keys and he loses it all. But at least it takes like a long time to do that gambling. He could do that in like eight seconds. Like when we were gambling in uh, Manila, I like the last day I went in with like a hundred dollars. And I was like doing safe bets, incremental, incremental. And then on my last two hands, when I was about to basically bust, I doubled it up and I doubled it up again. And then I was in profit, literally two hands. That's all it takes. So like the swings are so much that a child can't deal with the emotion of that. And it's like completely different than unboxing crates, in my opinion. Nice. It's like it's a piece of gambling, but it's not like the it doesn't like allow you to degenerate gamble. At least at least there's like breaks. You have to like put more money in, buy more keys, open yeah. chests one at a time. Like it's slow. At least it's like playing slot machines. You ever seen somebody like lose their life on a slot machine? Yeah. yeah, those Probably are actually never. like a, a massive problem in our province. Really? Yeah, man. Slot, the slots, the BLTs, huh? man. Yeah, there's like all these wow. laws about them because you can't, you can't like have more than so poker? many in certain places. Huh? Is it like video poker or something? Video yeah. lottery terminal. So it's just like a little, it's just like a, it's just literally a, a slot machine. You Digital press the slot button machine. Over and over. Yeah. yeah very, it's very exciting. That's... Which, which, where do you live again? Which province? Nova Scotia. So far east. It's... So but, there's probably nothing to do there. If there's it's, if literally it's, nothing to do. Yep, <laughs> so it's, See, it's your BLTs. Your like mine, and it sounds like the people from each of our places are very similar. Yes. Nothing to do but drink, yep. and uh, it's both. really cold sometimes. <laughs> so you're like, well, what the fuck do we do? I guess we'll play video poker and drink. 
And that's probably why it's a problem there. If there's, like, <laughs> now they all play those nature. freemium games. I think that's yeah. that's gonna be like the next big thing. Like I, I've seen so many like elderly people like getting tablets and shit, and now they're all like addicted to these like you know Heyday or some other freemium pay for shit game that I hear about like Farmville. I don't know. Is that still a thing? I think Farmville's that's, that's an old meme. Still that's pretty really kaput. That's, old, that's but, an yeah. ancient meme. That's like Zynga's been struggling. Old. I guess now they'll be buying <laughs> Pokeballs. Like you know, the old people yeah. will be out. Yeah. I would rather them do that personally than just play a slot machine. Like it's I know, the same, and that's what's weird about it. It's the same like desire in some ways to like play yeah. a lot of video games, but at least it's sometimes skill based, and at least it's something that has Correct. a culture. No, but there's yeah. still that little aspect of gambling in Pokemon Go that makes it more fun. Like every time you feel that you're like, oh, it could be any Pokemon. You know, you hatch a 10 kilometer egg, and you go, it could be anything. This could be a Chansey. You know, this could be. Really, so having just that little bit of randomness makes, at least for me, it makes me want to play it a little more because you always know there's that chance of you might get a rare Pokemon. But the, the last aspect of this I want to ask about before we wrap this up is how is this going to affect viewership for Dota? I don't want to talk about CSGO viewership. Who knows? Um, but Dota 2 Lounge in particular, that site is notorious yeah. for pushing traffic to streams. Like for the last two and a half years, like even when I started at BTS, I remember like having to negotiate with Dota 2 Lounge about getting the games listed versus they wanted, you know, sponsorships and, you know, ads on the stream in exchange for listings. They've had that conversation with pretty much every big tournament organizer. Um, they claim that they push huge viewership, especially to like tier two, tier three tournaments, stuff that's on Hitbox, stuff that's on Azubu. Is they there a, a reason to watch tier three content on Azubu now that you can't bet on it? Like, is that just, do you guys think it'll actually tank the viewership or not have that big of an impact? Uh, well, as someone who streamed a lot on like, um, like I helped <laughs> out with a lot of those like shit tournaments in the past year, I think it's absolutely going to murder them because I don't think like you're gonna have to work so hard on your PR now. Like people don't dig for games of like PR versus Danish bears from the yeah. past year. No one gives a shit. Like you look at if you don't have the 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 actual like matchup on Dota 2 Lounge and you have a game that day. It's like 150 people. I mean, that's always been my go-to. Okay, let's just get a sense of the odds Dang. of how people feel about this game. It's usually the most, like, you know, who uses Gosu bets or the join Dota? Like, click which team you want to win. This is, you gotta put something on the line. I always looked at that number as a, an interesting representation of, of what the fans think, if nothing else. All right, I so next I'm question. Wrong. Does it matter that it's gonna kill viewership? I think there's positives and negatives. Um, it'll hurt viewership, that's a problem. Big positive is people will be way less angry if their team loses because they lost money because <laughs> they fucking gambled it away. That's, That's a big true. positive. Yeah, but so can let's... these teams play now without these sponsors? Because, like, the viewership is... Okay, well, yeah, that's Bad. that's the problem. Is that, like, basically teams that aren't going to any big tournament are not going to make any money now, arguably. Or there's going to be less money available for yeah, yeah. very small tournaments. I would say three years ago this would be awful, but right now I, it doesn't bother me that much. What do you personally. think, Sox? What? Huh? What do you think about D2L going down? Are we fucked? What's D2L? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. I don't know. Uh, you, you got these lower... But that's always been the problem in Dota, especially in like the US and stuff. It's these new upcoming teams. They need support and they don't have it. So the new lifeblood in Dota is kind of rare. You know, Once in a while, get some new European team or something. But um, yeah, it sucks that they're not going to get that. But at the same time, a problem doesn't get fixed until it becomes a real problem. And yeah. putting all this pressure... I mean, getting by based on a single betting site is definitely not the solution. So will it hurt in the short term? Probably. But if we, it becomes such a problem that Valve will have to step up and do something about it, and they only do stuff when they have to, uh, it could be good in the long term. So sorry, D2O. Wish I could okay. uh, be on that, but you should offer me a sponsorship, bitch. I don't give a fuck if you're gone. See it. <laughs> also, it doesn't mean gambling sites are gone. Like we talked about, you can still do yeah. real money. Yeah, like literally D2L could literally just change their model from gambling with skins to gambling with cash. Yeah, I mean, that's a whole that's new true. string of, of regulations. And, you know, I don't know what country they registered be the play, to. But honestly, like yeah. if anything, sell to someone who's willing to do that transition and, and book it. Like, I mean, that don't means change have to, like, back into a trading website or something like that. Screw yeah. that. You have like the highest well, number of people to check every like day. Reincorporating in the trading. Cayman Islands and doing all sorts of bullshit. They can still do trading, just not. Oh yeah, then no, they can currency. still do trading. That's fine, so, but yeah, that's fine. Like their website can still exist. They just have to pay people to transition their site programming wise, yeah. and then they have to get good with the laws and make sure that they ensure that no under eighteen, because it's clear that the government is going to be ready to crack mm. down and shit. And I mean, it doesn't seem like that's too out of the question, though. I I don't want to be racist, 
But don't, like, Chinese dudes, they have, like, uh, those guys that, like, farm items and shit, and they're, like, worthless items, but they do it all day. I mean, they could easily just trade items instead, you know? Instead of farming them on MMOs. You're saying pay people to do the accrual yeah. and stuff? He said, yeah. Yeah, that yeah instead of paying somebody bad. to farm that's, wild gold, pay them to trade items like a bot would. You have exactly. less control, then. You have to make sure they don't steal from you. I don't know, man. The trust is the hardest part. Yeah, what's to stop that yeah. person from just walking away with a six arcana payout, you know? You probably just Or, or someone them. will be like, I <laughs> gave you that extra $10 courier. Where, why didn't you put it in for value? You messed up, the, you know? Yeah. Like, bots, that's why robots are so much easier for shit like that. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be interesting. We live in interesting times, but uh, Valve gave all those sites listed on the cease and desist a 10-day deadline, and we're, we're coming up on it. It's either tomorrow or the next day, I think, when that deadline hits, so we'll see what happens. I don't we'll think... just turn the bots off if they're not ready. Yeah. So it might not be right away that we find out. I was yeah, surprised right. they kept operating, honestly. I mean, I guess it makes yeah. sense, but like... Why? It's the cash it's still today, yeah. I mean, who knows? Is D2L going to be the site that says, nah, fuck it, we're just going to keep on going, just uh, rip up the cease and desist like you do with uh, jury duty, and just go I, for okay. it, take them head on? Hey, What's you never know. What's going to do? You never know. <laughs> I have to say, I'm in like a couple of the chats where like some of the those people are on there, and there are people like legit just like asking in these chats, like random amateur casters and stuff, just like, guys, what's gonna happen to the site? Like, what are you guys gonna do? And they're like, we're not gonna talk about this here. And I was like, why do people think that they're gonna like give you your business model like in this random ass Skype chat? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know up. where where D2L uh, is registered. Though. Like, I don't know what <laughs> country they call home base, but if they're you know. Uh, Let's say they're a Ukrainian company, for example. Let's it's see. not easy for Valve to pursue them in terms of jurisdiction. You know, international stuff, especially if it's countries that don't have, if it's like Russia and United States, for example. You know, R Russia is not actively, you know, helping out the American justice system. Like, how does they could probably start tracking where their items are going mm. and um, start banning the bots? Because that's yeah. what they said. They were going to start banning bots if they kept doing trading. If they start doing using real people for it they might go farther and start saying no real people either. It, it kind of just depends. It's basically going to be a dancing game. Yeah. Maybe D2L keeps shifting the rules and forcing Valve to enforce new rules for oh a couple God. months to get more money and then they give up or change with them. Don't, don't you know. see what this is doing? Valve will be forced to ban bots. Thus, they'll be forced to put in more rules against making new Steam accounts. Thus, no more smurfing. They saved Dota 2, dude. We fucking got it. I love you, Counter-Strike. Woo! We're good! No Best more Smurfs! Holy shit! Smurfs exist, dude. It's called International Ranked. <laughs> yeah, that, oh god, the cesspool of Dota. I have not won a single one of those fucked up International Ranked games. I went back to playing regular Ranked. They're the worst! What? What's wrong with it? Why is it so bad? It was the Everybody's opposite at the MMR beginning. Wrong, that's why. At, at huh? the beginning, I felt like they were better. People buying compendiums no. right away. At least, they were if, awful for if, me, if at least. At mine least. were better, but uh, maybe it's just sample size. You know? Everybody what was really it? angry because they're like, this is my chance to hit 5K MMR. Uh, I'm not fun for up. once. I'm not going to be with dumbass allies. Let's play a game. And then everybody's bad still, and they're really angry, and they're like, what the fuck? Why is this happening? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty oh, accurate geez. portrayal, I think. Everybody was really angry at the start of that. It was awful. Yeah. I thought it was called International Ranked because it took one person from each... Uh, region of the world. <laughs> I've never played it in any. <laughs> yeah, it's always fun. just. I had last game there was a dude from uh, Russia, China, Peru, me, and then a kid from Italy. Wow! And I was like, this is international rank, baby. We're <laughs> right here. <laughs> Woo! I mean, why is it? Why is it so bad Crossing though? Borders. Why is it so bad though? Oh, People want to raise their MMR and they feel like this is their chance. Th there's a word for that that complex or syndrome or whatever. It's when you have that inflated sense of ego, but you, yeah, yeah, that's it. But you don't have the skills to back it up. It's probably a bad paraphrasing, but it's it's that conundrum where you think you're better than you are, so you get mad, and that kind of makes you worse. It's very I human, think... very human feeling. Very human. That is true. That is true. They should do that. We're every all year, humans, though. guys. Something that you thought you lost when you got into this obsessive go. Dota this career. Dunning-Kruger, a cognitive bias which relatively unskilled individu individuals suffer from illusory superiority, mistakenly assessing their ability to be much higher than it really is. That's why it people are angry. In everything. When you're yep. an adolescent and dating, trying to flirt with people, how good you are at things. It's technically ego, but I mean, it's, it's, a, it's an accurate representation. Everybody thinks they're better than they are because they're just naive about it. You're living your, you know, it's your business. story, right? So mm -hmm. that's why I try to live my life thinking that I'm shitty at everything. You know, never get You're just disappointed. a side character. You're not the main guy. <laughs> never get disappointed, baby. That's it. You know, if I plus one. hate myself, 
The world is my oyster. Every time I do something good, I'm like, I didn't know I was good at that. That's the ticket, guys. You ever want to be really good in life? Have really, really low self-esteem. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Good self-esteem, low self-worth. That's the ticket. For way, way to raise the bar, Slacks. All right, guys, we got to <laughs> we gotta wrap this big up. It's time to get out of here. It's time to let Slacks go to bed. Does anybody have a story this week? I don't have one. Mr. Hands was more than enough story time for me last week. Uh, I don't think I'm allowed to tell stories. Slacks is still on global cooldown from, from <laughs> last week's story time. Fair enough. I have one that's like kind of interesting, but it's not so much like, you, you, you know, it's not going to be like hentai with my sister. Sorry. No, it doesn't have to be gross. It could be a no. normal story. We, we, we're overdue oh, for a, a nice, somewhat well, normal what story. It's okay. got a Canadian let's, story. Yeah, in, well, this was actually a Lithuanian story. Oh, girl. So, okay. Um, we're out. Some of I gotta say, the people that we worked with at Game Show were fantastic. Like such a fun time. Like all the Russian guys. There was Peter and Ilya, and like just a grand old time. We, we were having a ball. Um, all to the production. There was like they were like putting the uh, like beaches in the background. Like over. Oh, my phone's going. Like that, green that's, screens. That's what the thing is. Yeah. Like instead of like the background, because like the stream we had literally eight viewers at one point. <laughs> some point. So. <laughs> Because they, well, they paid some Chinese company, apparently, well, sorry, the Chinese paid some European company, apparently $8,000 to promote their big tournament, and they literally disappeared with the money. Esports, good, good stuff. Good, yeah, So, So at some point, there's like eight viewers, and so we come back from the transition, and we have like the preview monitor, and like literally, it's just, oh, sorry, I keep bumping my mic, it's just me and Gareth sitting there with a beach behind us, and I'm just like, <laughs> it was bad. But anyway, so the real story was... Uh, the last night we finished up only a single best of three, two quick, you know, two quick games, two well, it was great. Um, and uh, so we uh, we go out that night. We're traveling around the city. We go into some bar, and we're sitting in this pub. And yeah, it's like one in the morning at this point. So we've been out for like five or six hours, and it's Gareth and me and some Russian guys. And Gareth suddenly goes, "Hey, look over there!" And I look over, and there's like eight people in Team Canada jackets. I'm like, "What in Lithuania? How cool is that?" And so I go up and, uh, well, they, they kind of saw me at the same time and they came over. Clearly you can recognize each other just being from Canada. So that was mm -hmm. great. Um, and they come up and first off, the guy's name was Doug. The first guy I talked to was like the most Canadian name ever. <laughs> and anyway, so I was like, oh, so what are you guys like? What, what sport do you guys play? And they said, we're the Canadian goalball team. Now, for, do you guys know what goalball is? Do not look it up. Okay. Don't you, do, you don't know. Don't you know. know. Okay, is this all confirmed? Okay. You can't do not Google it or else, you know, you're not going to. Anyway, so he's like, yeah, we're here in Lithuania. We're competing against all these countries. And he's telling me about it. And like, this is my team. And so I'm talking to this guy. Like, he's right up next to me and talking and stuff. And all, the whole time, all I'm thinking is, wow, that's really impressive that he's the captain of the team. And he's really cross-eyed. Like, this guy could not see very straight at all. Like, I was like, okay, well, that's crazy. This guy must be very talented. Um, and slowly, as I started meeting the rest of the Canadians, it turns out, they were all, you know, had some visual impairment because goalball is a game that you play blindfolded, okay? And there is like, there's like two soccer nets at the end of like a gym, and there's a ball that has these bells inside of it, and you're you're blindfolded, and the three of you literally like roll and like lie across the ground to like stop this ball, and you have to listen, and it's played in a totally silent, like like um arena basically, like everyone has to be like super quiet. It's like golf. There's like little signs they hold up. Yeah, so I learned all about goal. <laughs> Canadians come up with the weirdest shit. Like, yeah, and so they're like, they're up my face. They're like, hey, is you guys are they, are they clubs we can get some girls at? And I'm just like, oh my god, the Canadian goalball team needs assistance. And then <laughs> I kind of abandoned them, but it was good. Jeez. I had never wow. heard of goalball before. N nor else. I. Yeah, Let alone there the go. there's an international team for such a sport. Yeah, I even like started googling at home. I found like the one page about it on the entire internet. Jesus. I mean, if, if you're like visually impaired, it makes sense. You'd be better able to listen for information. So, yeah, there you go. Here you go. You're right. There's a Wikipedia page, a team sport designed specifically for blind athletes first uh, devised in 1946. Wow. Some goal ball, guys. It first started as a means of helping um, World War veterans, II veterans. I think it was. Yeah, yeah that's it. Wow, Trent, wow. you just educated us all. That was a, a yeah. very good, positive story time. That was that yeah, was. Sorry, a good sorry one. it's not the usual. People are gonna be really disappointed because there's no poop or anything. But... Well, that's good. <laughs> it kind of looks like I'll, they're all I'll wearing. Do my best for next time. They look like they're all wearing VR headsets in the pictures. Oh, yeah, I know. They're all wearing vibes. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right. Well, thank you for that, Trent. We certainly appreciate it. Uh, folks, Pirates that brings us no story, to the end you? of the episode. I don't have one. Purge, do you have one? Pirates, tell us no, story. No, I'm, I'm devoid of... I have a lot of things to do today, wow. so All I right. want to get going. Purge is trying to get out of here. <laughs> Veto story time. Time to end, guys. Wrap God it up. damn. All right. Well, this is, uh, I think, the last What the Duck before people get geared up for TI. So definitely don't expect another one before Seattle. But... Um, you know, I, I think some of the, the Moonduckers might be headed up that way, so maybe we can get something recorded in Seattle. Who knows? Always over-promise, under-deliver. That's how we like to do it here at What the Duck. Uh, you guys can find this on iTunes. iTunes, uh, What the Duck. That'll pop up right there on Google. Drop it in chat. It is properly tagged as explicit now. Someone brought that to our attention that... Um, there is an, a tag for content like ours, and it is now properly tagged. So uh, First time we have a family-friendly story. Yes, uh, there you go. And now that little E shows up next to the podcast. But you can find it there. Uh, the audio-only versions as well as uh, the video versions are archived on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash TV. But that's it. We're done. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you um, tomorrow for more Mr. Cat and more GGM action, if not at the International.